All right, everybody. So here is the what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna quickly drill the holes for all of these components that we need. First, I'll just kind of show these. These are the front or the back panel components. I've got a speaker jack, a three-way switch, fuse, uh, and then this will be the lock for the power cord. And this will go inside of a cabinet that just kind of locks the cord uh, so if you yank on it, it doesn't pull it off the back of the chassis as easily. So I'll move those aside. You'll see that a little bit as well. But uh, what I'm gonna focus on here is I'm gonna have a power switch, a light. I've got a top cut. This is the Brilliant switch. These will be the normal and tremolo volumes. My four uh, input jacks will go here. I'll have the tremolo, high-low, and the normal high-low. I have a, a switch here that will be... Oh, actually, I think I got these backwards, right? Oh, no, that's the yeah, other. So this, this is then the vibrato tremolo switch. This will be the depth uh, with uh, the depth pop. But it also has a push-pull uh, potentiometer in that as well as a switch that will be used as part of that. And then the finally, instead of having a switched, um, sorry, I think it's actually this one. Instead of having switches for the three different levels, I'm just going to have a one meg pot that will then sweep and you can just dial in the exact um, speed and depth that you want with these two potentiometers. Um, in the original schematic, I, I realized they have it spit, set to some very specific values, but I would much rather have the ability to adjust those as a fine-grained control where you can adjust that, that speed and depth instead of it being just switchable speeds. Uh, so that is how that will look and I'm going to go ahead and I will put a bit of the tape that I've done there before along here, give myself some nice line down the middle and try and lay it out. Uh, so I'll get the tape on it here in a minute and then start back up when I'm ready to start showing off exactly where things are going to go. So there you have it. All right. so. Now I think I've got this laid out pretty well. You're at a bit of an angle, but you can kind of remember what I was showing before. Um, that is the way I, I'm laying that out now, and I'm just kind of trying to decide quickly if I think that it might be better to keep these and kind of swap them places so that we have the inputs there. Although, the one thing that I think might... No, now that I think about it, I'm looking at this. Again, remember I told you where the transformers are going to be. <coughs> I have the wire for the output transformers coming down right through here. So I'll try and keep them out of the way as much as possible, but I don't want them too close to the inputs. So the inputs, even though they'll be shielded, they're going to come in through here and come across back into the back area over the side, which is away from where that output transformer is. We will be running some wires over to these for the volume control before they get to the next stage, but uh, at that point, it's uh, you know still going to be in a better case. Now, one of the things I can tell you already that's a bit of a a bit of a conundrum now that I'm thinking about it is I might want to compress this anyway because these guys should be closer to the so this is going to be the preamp tube that's for the EF86 or no that's the phase inverter this is the EF86 and then these are the ones for the other one so I might literally I'm putting those so far away from those it's going to be a bit tricky but I do want to give myself a little gap right here where those wires are coming in so I can maybe even make a visual mark for myself to help as I know that's where the power wires are coming in and this is where the other wires are my choke drops down through about here. Choke isn't as big of a deal because it's just a filtering to the power section. But So uh, ultimately, I'm a bit tight on space on this front panel, but uh, there, there is the uh, uh, where I'm going to try and lay things out for now. So what I'll do is I will, um, as you've seen me kind of do before, I'm going to pull out my drill bit guide. I'll set these guys aside and we'll go one, one, one piece at a time and I will get that stepper bit. I'm going to first mark along the center line with my punch all. Then I will get a small drill bit and drill that first hole for all of these. And then after I've done that, I'll kind of look back again and try and line all those up. So we'll be doing that here in just a moment. Okay, I've marked them all. I did. You can't see them all. A couple of these I've had to go higher and lower for my, for example, I put them out a little bit from that center line for my input jacks and for my power and LED lamp. Another thing I had to be careful of and I watched and caught myself on is I was trying to do just about a, a total of an inch between them on some of these. But then when I put this guy here, uh, these kind of jacks, you tend to actually want to have the soldered connections towards the top end up here because that way, you know, up is on and down is off. It's the reverse of what, you know, a lot of people usually think. But that meant it was going to be right overlapping where this would go, which meant that I would have no space. So I moved it up so that it's lining up more about here. So the switch will be fairly low, but that should still give me plenty of room to put, put my LED in there as well. So um, we will begin the drilling of the pilot holes, and then we're going to have to drill each hole size dependent upon what we need afterwards, but we'll look at that. Some of these, the drill bit size will be something I can use, others I'm going to have to use the stepping bit. It depends on how big they are, but we'll take a look at that in a minute after I get these pilot holes drilled.
if you notice I'm wearing gloves, I'm trying to be better at that because as you see all these little bits of metal that come out, I've cut my hands almost every time somewhat, so that's trying to save me a little bit of skin. So, all right, so next what I'll do is I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna see, uh, so I need to have it bigger than the width of the actual post here. So I'm gonna get my calipers here and measure that really quickly. It doesn't need to be super tight, it just needs to basically um, give me a, a, a feel for a bit that will fit a slightly larger size than this. So if, if I have a bit that is flush on that one, it's probably not going to be big enough. So I will quickly check my bits and see which one I want to use on this one. Yeah, that bit's okay, so I have a bit that will work for that first one. And it may work for quite a few of the other ones as well, we shall see. But this one looks to me like it's the right size. So I will kind of also just do a quick eyeball as well, but it does look... Like it's just slightly larger, so that should be perfect. Okay, so put my gloves back on and uh, drill this hole. Of course, my little wood blocks I was balancing this up with just fell off. All right, let's brush aside some of those chips. Now we will see. And she fits. Okay, cool. One down. And we'll just have to kind of quickly validate each one of these. Maybe the same size, but I can test that also by the same thing here. I'm going to quickly just check if that's the right bit. And that's the right bit for that one as well. All right, so the that one definitely fits it, so we'll use that one as well on this guy. Now I'm going to need to change bits because I noticed that the, uh, I think my battery's dead, it is. I've noticed that the input jacks and the power switch sized ones are quite a bit larger. So, and once I have one hole, then I just quickly validate all of them. So we've got our jack switch in there. That seems to be just the perfect size pretty much for that guy. With these. Oh yeah, like I said, that actually, that's absolutely perfect. Okay, cool, cool. So this largest one will now be what I also use for my input jacks. All right, so now the final one, I think I think also both of these little guys are the same size. Uh, they look to me to be the same size, so I just need to get a drill bit. I'll try and compare this guy again with the calipers. So I will measure the width of that and try and find a bit that is slightly larger than that. All right, so those are done. I'll peel off this tape and we will try and kind of mount them quickly and see how they look. So, see how that went. There she is. So as you can see now, I have, I'll have my power switch here and the light. I have my uh, top or my uh, bright switch here. I have cut, top cut the two volumes. These are my input jacks. This will be the on-off switch. I have a toggleable switch here as well for the um, re, or for the tremolo, and then this is these are the two pots for the tremolo. So that part done. We'll come back here in a little bit and get, do the back so you can see what that's like, but uh, that's some good progress for the day. We'll uh, see how that turns out with the back in, in the next little segment here. Thanks. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly do the opposite side. 
And before I do that, I'm gonna want to actually pull these guys back out because I don't wanna accidentally kinda crunch them. So I'll do that really quickly. You know, get the tape on the other side and then we'll go from there. Quick one here. I just realized when I was trying to fit things and I'll flip this over in a second here and show you, but that was really tight on the, uh, on the way I was gonna try and fit the fuse on the back, so I've decided to put it here on the front, and that's common on some amps anyway, because the guitarist will need to replace those fuses more often than anyone else. So I'll just put another hole there for that one. So that goes on the front now. Um, because as I was starting to look at the back, you will see I was trying to fit what would go in here, and uh, I need to fit uh, the power cord and uh, that will go roughly here but after i put that there i realized because of the way these sockets are the power cord will go in between kind of come in between this guy uh, right here that gives it room to kind of come in uh, link in with the transformer power cables that are going to come in across here and then hook up to this rectifier socket pretty straightforward uh, and then go through the rectification which will then go over to these guys but i didn't have room easily either on this side you can kind of see how tight this is here versus here i just didn't have room to fit in there so at any rate i'm going to mark these guys off and uh, try and figure the size of that in just a minute here. So uh, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so, sorry, I had to just adjust the camera a little bit. So now <clears throat> I've got the other things I'm gonna put back here is I'm gonna put my power cable in here and I have to figure out what size drill bit will work for that. We'll look at that in a second. And then I'm going to need to put in, uh, I wanna put it, this is gonna be the switch jack where I will connect in um, the three, well, the output will go straight to this guy, but the other three inputs will come in from the three different ohm ratings. Uh, so I'm going to put it roughly about here, because that will be right after, like where my output transform will come across to, and then I'll have a small jumper. I'm going to put this guy just right next to it here somewhere. So uh, the, actually, I think I'll actually put it over here, because I, I don't want any of this output section to be too close to the preamp side. Now the phase inverter is probably the least susceptible. That's here. But still, I'm gonna keep this guy as close to line with that. I'll run those wires straight over to here, uh, other than the ground, which goes straight to this guy. And then I'll connect a single jumper from here over to this guy, and then the rest of the three will connect into here. And that way I'll be close to the, also be able to hook these into the, uh, the, the output transformer hooks into the output pins of the power tubes as well. So that'll put it kind of a nice situation there. So, oh, actually those aren't power tubes. <laughs> I just am doing it backwards, aren't I? So actually, Let's do that backwards. I will still put this about here because I want my selector to be pretty much in line with where that's coming through. And then I'll put my output jack about here, keeping it away from, this is the phase inverter and these are the other tubes. So to keep that a little bit segregated as best I can over the side. So there you go. So I'm gonna mark those off about there and then I will measure what I think needs to fit in them and cut those out. So let's do that really quickly. All right, found the separate bit. So what I'm gonna do is just carefully try and drop this down one more notch so we'll get it down to the spot. Let's see if that looks good. I've just gotten it one spot here. And, and again, this one, these guys are a little tricky to because they have, um, you have to kind of compress it to just get it to even go in. But you want it to look like it's gonna go in easily or close to easily without the thing in it, but then it gets expanded afterwards. So. Okay, there we have it, the final front panel. Fuse is now here, power and light switch and all the other stuff as we discussed. And then if I flip it around, I now have the switcher to select the different impedances, the output, and then I have the input for the power cord. Um, so it seems like there's one other thing on the back here that I remembered I'm missing and I'm just totally drawing a blank right now, but I think there's one other piece I'm gonna wanna put back here, um, but I'll probably figure it out eventually. Um, that's pretty much where we're at with this. What I'm next going to be doing is we will pull this up to this to this something like this, and we will we're gonna I'm gonna just quickly right now show you roughly how this will lay out. But here is how this is going to go in. And if you remember, I realized uh, kind of after the fact that one of these wires is too short because it needs to reach all the way over there. The um, you know the order would be pretty much this one goes here, this one goes to 
don't know if you can even see that. I might need to tilt it more. But these red wires are going to go to the power tubes. Uh, everything else is going to hook into these uh, preamp tubes through pretty much to about here. Uh, and then you can see also I'll be able to hook, be hooking things in this way. Uh, this should all line up, I'm hoping, pretty well. It's because it gives me room for still to fit everything in place. All right, uh, I just discovered on the forums this week, after posting the last video, that I made a boo-boo. I have not really thought this out well, and instead of anchoring these like this, I should have turned them sideways this way. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two bolts, rotate it this way, and then I only need two of them instead of four of them, and they will just anchor out this way to give a strong basically a bending moment for those of you that know engineering terms, but uh, that, that will allow a lot more stability just on that one way. So I'm going to quickly just do those and then we'll be back in a minute. Sorry, uh, thanks Slucky yet again. I keep saying how he's helped me figure out stuff. I'm still not great at doing this stuff, but he's got that tip where I just going to turn it sideways, remove the extra one, and I think we'll be good to go. All right, there you have it. You can see I've got these brackets set up here and over here. The other thing that I was noted uh, by Slucky with his attentiveness is I think I remember I was explaining that I wanted these slots being at this side just because that gives me less room to fight behind. But his layout had actually designed it so that that was the other way around because a lot of the heaters are on that back side anyway, uh, especially on the preamp tubes. But um, So instead, I need to adjust all of these, just flip them 180 degrees so that they're facing the way that his layout expected them. Otherwise, it would cause a lot of really weird crisscrossing of wires. So I'll be getting that done here in a minute and show you that as well. All right, so now you can see, if you look up here, all of these openings are now towards the top and face what the actual layout was. So those are all back in correctly now. Next step really, of course, is to finish populating the board. As you, uh, you will see in the subsequent videos, I started doing the populating of the board, but decided I really needed to make sure I could fit everything successfully in. So I've got part of the board populated, but I'll continue that shortly. But uh, as you can see, oh, I'm doing that upside down. This board will go in this way. These are the uh, resistors that go to the power section, and it will go up about like that. Uh, so we'll continue the, that part in a little bit here, and you will see all of that. But now we can see I pretty much have everything ready, but what I'm going to do before I even get to that is now I'm going to permanently mount my transformers, run the wires inside, because after I finish populating the board and soldering all that and getting all of those short wires together, I'm going to need to wire in power, rectifier, all of those kinds of wiring heaters inside of here so that they are done so that when I drop that board and the board is literally just dropped in, anchored, and then tight, uh, tied into all of the different components that either sit up here or down at the bottom. So that's what we'll have next. All right, so I am at a very close spot now to where just finishing the board and put it together is there. So I've now got this fully mounted. You can see the transformers. The, this is the power transformer, the choke, and the output transformer. Wires going down through. I'll spin it around. This is quite heavy now with all of this. You also have the choke, you can't, let me see if I can tilt that at an angle where you can see. Alright, so you can see the choke wires back kind of behind, oops, I'm right in there kind of, you can see them back down, going down as well. And then if we're to pick this up, turn this over, you will see all the wires coming in through. I've got the power transformer wires here, the choke here, and the output transformer wires here. So, uh, as a quick raw and dirty on that, I will end up effectively bringing the um, white wires are the um, connections for the five volts for the rectifier. I will connect the black wire, which is the main for the primary side of the transformer into the power coming in. I will then connect the green wires to the heaters. So those primarily for just the heaters. And then this red center tap one goes to ground and the outer sides, these two will go to the other side of this guy and then that will lead off to my HT and I'm filtering and everything like that. So we'll get that progress going soon. But for now, like I said, what I will wire into this guy to start off with is going to be the heaters. So they'll, they'll come up to start here and then head down and across. I'll wire up the, the, uh, uh, the rectifier. Uh, once the rectifier and wire heater are hooked up, then I can start hooking all of the, you know, the actual board in and whatnot. Um, so, but, First step done. Oh, the other thing I will wire as well is I'm going to wire in all of my uh, input jacks because I will run those input wires underneath here under the board and then drop the board over the top of those as well. So, okay. I'll let you know how that comes from there.